You see, that's the problem with air drying. No matter how long you do it, in this case, it was probably close to 100 years, it's still not gonna get it down to the moisture count that is needed for most indoor applications. In this video, I get back this barnwood tabletop that I did for a customer and have to replace it. All because the lumber was not properly dried. Stay tuned. What's going on guys? Today I just wanted to make a really fast video of my experience with this. Um, not many people on social media or YouTube show their mistakes, but that is really how you learn. So I really just wanted to share this in hopes of just helping someone out. So due to the high like lumber prices and all that, I'm sure a lot of people are looking for deals on cheap wood through Marketplace or Craigslist. The problem with that is most of that's gonna be air dried lumber. And if that, it might not even be air dried. It's probably, could be freshly cut or anything like that. And sometimes that's just not always the best thing to do. Because more than likely, it's not gonna be properly dried and it's gonna come back and bite you in the ass. So not too long ago, I picked up this tabletop I built for a customer uh, because it was shrinking, warping, and probably eventually gonna crack. So I really just wanna talk about the importance of using properly dried lumber. So a rule of thumb out there is to let it air dry for one year per one inch of thickness. So two inch thick piece of wood, you let air dry for two years, right? Not always the case. So this barn, what I picked up was probably drying for upwards of over, well over 50 years. If not, probably closer to 100 years. So why did this happen? Why isn't it dry? So what happened here is I built this last summer in my father-in-law's garage. It's not climate controlled. I built it in the mid of summer of like 100% humidity and pretty much built it outside. Now breadboard end tables are tough to begin with, even with kiln dried lumber because the grain running this way is gonna expand and contract this way. And then your breadboard ends right here are gonna expand and contract this way. So in this case, it contracted way in. As you can see, there's a good probably three eighths of an inch on each breadboard end where this inner part contracted in. So even kiln dried lumber is gonna expand and contract like this. This was done correctly with floating tenons. I used my Festool Domino and just glued the center one to allow expansion contraction, as you can see, obviously. And kiln dried lumber will do this as well, but it definitely will not be as extreme as this. So after I had it all built, I took this, delivered it probably July, and the customers were thrilled, they were happy with it, they loved it. Fast forward seven months later, and now it looks like this. So the worst part about all that though, was they lived close to an hour away. I had to build a replacement tabletop. I had to drive there, pick this up, install the new tabletop, and then drive home. But that was just, that's a lot of time that you're not getting paid for when you should have just done it use properly dried lumber to begin with. It just makes a ton more work for yourself. And now I'll be able to repurpose this and reuse it, but if it was done correctly in the beginning, that would have saved me a ton of time, travel time, and basically build another table for free. So like I said, I delivered this in July, midsummer. So basically when September, October, November hit, the winter months and the heating season, the furnaces kicked on, their dining room basically turned into a kiln for this tabletop, which if it was kiln dried to begin with, it would have been fine. This would have contracted a very little bit, definitely not as extreme as this. So yeah, when the furnace kicked on, it sucked extra moisture out of this. You see, that's the problem with air drying. No matter how long you do it, in this case, it was probably close to 100 years, it's still not gonna get it down to the moisture count that is needed for most indoor applications with modern day furnaces and all that. And I'm glad this happened because it was just such a good learning experience and that's basically why I wanted to share this video, share what happened to this tabletop. So I'm guessing when I built this table, it was probably around 12% maybe moisture content. I'm not entirely sure. I didn't have a moisture meter at that point, but now I do and I tested the moisture on it now. I just got this Clean Tools pinless moisture meter and it's down to like five, 
6%. So now it's basically kiln dried lumber that I can now cut this down, resand it, take my track saw and reconnect the breadboard ends, but it's now dry enough for indoor application. Basically because their dining room was a kiln for it. Now there's some cases where air drying lumber is gonna be just fine. Um, let's say like a laundry room, maybe a mud room, a bathroom, definitely like outdoor furniture, obviously air drying lumber is fine. But in this case where it was in their dining room, right where their heaters are during the winter months, this obviously was not a good fit for that. But to play it safe moving forward, I'm only gonna be using kiln dried lumber. I actually bought a sawmill, so I'll let my lumber air dry for a certain amount of time, probably down below 20%. And then I'm actually gonna build a kiln in my basement so I can get it down to the proper moisture content. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to getting that sawmill built. I bought a um, Woodland Mills HM130 Max. Uh, I have it stored in my trailer right now and I'm just waiting for the weather to turn so I can get it built and get some slabs milled. Really looking forward to doing that. The weather should turn soon. And then yeah, like I said, I'm gonna be building a kiln in my basement, but more on that later. As far as this video goes, I just wanted to keep it at that. Just share my experience on how important it is to start with properly dried lumber. Uh, I just can't stress it enough. If you don't, it makes just a ton more work for yourself. And on larger projects like this, it's just, it's gonna come back and bite you in the ass. So moving forward, Kiln dried lumber is just what I'm gonna be using. It's just way more stable. So, hope this video helps out someone. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.